Hey y'all, hope you're having an amazing Monday. Uh, I'm currently drinking another cup of coffee. It's, I know it's four o'clock in the afternoon, but um, I just felt like having one, so I am. Um, we're currently getting a thunderstorm, um, you know, and I always like thunderstorms because of um, the lightning and how it just kind of reminds me of the strength of God. Like, sometimes there was one that, that striked like right next to the, the house here a minute ago and it was just like, whoa. Like it's a really, really quick reminder of how powerful God is and how he is always in control. Um, and I just wanted to remind you of that because with every day that passes, I feel like there's just more and more intel and more and more information that's coming out and um, it's so important that we stay steadfast um, and remember that Jesus is the remedy. He is the, the reason for all of this um, and he is someone that we just need to um, stay steadfast and focused on. So um, I just wanted to remind you of that and encourage you and if I'm going to start saying this in the beginning of my videos because um, I don't like waiting to the end. You know, the whole reason that I made this YouTube channel was to bring people to Jesus and into salvation. So um, if you are an unbeliever um, and you just so happen to pop on this video, I don't take that as a coincidence at all. I feel like God led you here. Um, and if you are somebody who um, feels like you just want to have Jesus in your life and you're ready to make that commitment, um, the sinner's prayer and the prayer of salvation is always in the description box below. Um, and all you have to say is that I am a sinner. Jesus, I ask that you um, take my heart and replace it with one of yours. I, I just ask that the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit come into my life right now. Um, I acknowledge right now that you came, you died, and you rose on the third day, that your blood shed off the cross to cover my sins, um, and that I am a sinner, and I cannot do this life without you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, there's also a description in the description box, so you don't have to press pause and all that stuff, but um, my phone's about to die, so I'm gonna kind of get to the point here. Um, since I started my YouTube channel, I, I, I was already like hard pressed into doing a lot of just YouTubing, um, and really, really kind of intertwined with the Christian community. Um, just, you know, keeping, keeping my eyes on Jesus and um, just wanting to learn and dive deeper. And I really just became obsessed. I, I like love YouTube. I've always loved it. And um, I just felt that God was leading me on here and that he just wanted me to get my voice on here too. Um, and that's really been my goal from the start. I, I'm not doing this for any reason other than to bring people into salvation or be be that soil that someone can plant a seed in you know um i've just noticed though since i've started this that the comment section um is full with deception and you know for a minute um, I was just kind of letting it just be down there in the comments below. It's like this black hole of like just random comments. I don't even, half the time they don't even make sense. Um, but you know, after I, I, I thought about it and really prayed about it, I feel like the Holy Spirit was leading me to, um, delete these comments. Um, because you know, at the end of the day, when I, this is my channel that God's given me um, and I want to protect it and I, I have a mission to spread the true gospel and I don't I don't want to um, 
deceive anybody outside of me and my videos. So if they're on my channel, if you're on my channel and you're kind of in this space of just vulnerability and you're just trying to understand what it all entails, what salvation is, what who like who Jesus is, you know, you might you might just be completely just questioning a lot of things and that's that's awesome that you're seeking out knowledge. Um, and I, I, I don't want my channel or the comments section to be a place of confusion. So um, I just wanted to put that out there that um, I'm sure there's still gonna be them, but for anyone who just drops random stuff into the comments and it's misleading or um, it's just straight up false, um, it will be deleted because um, on this channel we will be following the one true gospel and that is that Jesus came he died and he rose again on the third day um, and that he is coming back for us I believe on this channel that or I believe that we um, will be raptured out of here very very soon honestly I think it's gonna be it's gonna happen before the election um, but obviously if the election comes and passes then you know like the date we were wrong and we're not really setting dates or times on this channel either we're just being watchmen and women and um, he tells us that we will know the season and I believe that that season is now it's very strongly I feel it in my spirit churning but I just wanted to encourage you guys um, pray for discernment because I'm noticing that there is a lot of confusing false doctrines that are just flying up on YouTube. I mean, um, for anyone who's just coming in as a child of God, who just who just stepped into salvation, um, it's easy to kind of be deceived um, or yeah it's it's just easy to be like deceived hold on <laughs> um and i just ask that or pray you know that that god gives you eyes to see ears to hear and a heart that's open for receiving um and that you keep working on that because there's a lot of deception right now so just be very cautious of that um and just stay steadfast, steadfast and focused because there's so much, there's, there's, I, I don't want to say there's a lot of time left because there's not, but I don't know the day or the hour. I just know that it's imminent. I know, I feel it. I feel it. And so does so many others in the community and around the world. Um, you can see the rapture signs everywhere. Um, it's, it's crazy. And I don't honestly have enough time to even list them off in the video. But um, if your eyes are on Jesus, it's super easy to see what's going on around us is leading up to the rapture and the tribulations. Um, I actually just posted today on my Instagram that there's this, um, this is totally like side note, but um, I know the, co the COVID, I don't want to say the word, the V-A-C-C-I-N-E. Um, I don't know if they'll flag my video or something, but... Uh, anyways, I noticed that they were talking about today that they are using a technology called CRISPR, I think. Um, and it's basically like snipping DNA and like eliminating DNA. It's, and this, this is being talked about being placed in the COVID V-A-C-C-I-N-E. Um, do I believe that this is the mark of the beast? I don't know there's talk that it will happen in December so it might be don't don't like quote me on that but um, or it could just be a precursor or a test run just to kind of see how easily people play into it because um, if 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 you're forced as in like your job say for instance your job dem mandates that you need to have this vaccine in order to continue working with us a lot of people will sign up to do that because of obvious reasons they want to keep making money to survive 
Um, and that's kind of how the end times are going to be. If you are here, and the whole point of this channel is to avoid you being here, is to get you to come into salvation, to understand what you're signing up for. If you, for some reason, if you just keep avoiding and turning the other cheek and don't accept the gospel and come into salvation with Jesus, um, you're, you're signing up to be here for seven years. And the only way that you can be saved at that point, because once we're raptured, we are out of the the church age, the age of grace, where you can come into salvation through faith in Jesus Christ, that he came dead and, and rose. Um, and the grace of God gave us that opportunity. Um, we will be exiting that like time frame. And so like the moment that the church is raptured, we are now entering into the seven year tribulation, which from what I have read in the Bible, um, it's my understanding that there's a few things that go into this. Um, either A, need to die because of your faith in Jesus, which I believe is kind of why all these hospitals have popped up. Um, you know, my conspiracy video searching years ago kind of spawned off in my first video was about Walmart and how they turned them into concentration camps. Um, all of this stuff is gonna still come to pass in my opinion. Um, and all of these things are going to be used as prisons for people who don't take the mark of the beast. That's obviously just my research. Feel free and please I encourage for you to go and research your own material. This is just stuff I'm kind of putting together. Um, but if you, God forbid, are here for the seven year tribulations, you have to A, endure the seven years, meaning you basically cannot die. You have to find a way to make it through the seven years. And it says strictly in the Bible that a third of the world is going to die during this time and that Jesus or that God needed to cut it short or else everyone would be dead. So uh, that's just a little snippet of how extreme those seven years are going to be. Um, and the only ways that you can be saved from what I understand is to endure the seven years, which if you make it in the seven years, you in my opinion are very blessed but um or you literally have to be beheaded you have to die for jesus so i always the thing i've been saying the last few weeks is if you can't come to salvation when it's free and simple why would you think that you'd be able to make it or come to salvation when death is the price you know what I mean? So it's like right now you have the opportunity to literally just humble yourself, be vulnerable and completely just come into salvation with a simple prayer, but also believing in your heart and having faith that God's word is true. And, and you, you build that over time, um, every day, just diving into the word, staying, staying present in God's word, praying, um, and just knowing even in the midst of struggle and pain that God is in full control. Um, I just have to keep reiterating that, that if you are a Christian, a lot of Christians don't even, I mean, I can say this from personal testimony experience. I have been a Christian since I was born. Like I, like I was raised in this and to be quite honest with you, I have learned more since COVID-19 hit the United States. My faith was shaken so hard that I have never in my life learned and know as much as I do now in these past three months. As a Christian, I have been baptized. Um, I was raised in a church basically when I was really, really young. Like these are things that I'm talking like rapture, mark of the beast. Like it was all just topics I've heard but they were never detailed to the point where I was like, yes, this is it. And like evangelizing because I was so certain. And so I know with, without question that there are other Christians out there and I'm probably speaking to you right now that are a little foggy in certain topics in certain areas. And I just encourage you right now, while you still have this God given time, you need to, you need to be redeeming 
um, in taking advantage of the time that God is still giving us and just dive into his word with all the minutes and seconds that he's blessing us with right now and just completely just engulf yourself in it and just learn and get knowledgeable and you know in that process you know if you don't feel like you have the ambition to do it just ask God ask him for the motivation ask him to be on fire and to give you the that ambition to just want to dive back into the word um for everything, I used to, I used to be like, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, um, and I just had everything so twisted. I was, I backslid into the world, and then I came back into my my faith, and it's just like, I have never been so on fire for Jesus and just for spreading the good news, and um, I've never felt so like I was in the right place. I've never felt so confident of being where I am right now. Like, I just know this is where God wants me to be. And so um, that also goes to say that you don't have to have a YouTube channel to do good works in God's kingdom. Not everyone is designed to be in this, like, in this time to be on YouTube speaking. Um, there's tons of other ways that God's using people. Um, prayer warriors some people are better at prayer warriors some people are better at kind of diving like super studying the bible um you know people who just completely are like well versed in the bible to the point where they can just spout out um verses like god's using everyone in such a special and unique way and that's just a reminder that god made you um you are beautifully and wonderfully made. I believe that's how it says. But everybody was created for a specific reason, for a specific purpose. And um, we all have gifts and stuff that is so unique to us. And um, if you're unclear on what those are, ask him to. Say, God, I just need you to make me more aware. Make it clear on what my gifts are and and sharpen those, sharpen those skills. Um, and he will. God is God is so good and he is so a God of promise and he is so steady and he is a just God and he's not a God of confusion and he is just he doesn't go back on his word everything that's in this Bible is going to happen and it some of it has already happened it's just such an amazing book but um I kind of got off on the tangent but it's kind of the goal for this video I just had a lot to say but um I'm gonna leave you guys with encouragement um I'm gonna read actually a couple of passages that I've flagged in my bible um this is a reminder that grace is through faith so it says this is gonna be in Ephesians 2 8 says for by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not your own doing it is the gift of god not a result of works so that no man may boast for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus for good works which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them meaning that he's already preordained you to do exactly what you're doing in this moment how incredible is that um I also read in here and it says, <clears throat> it says he has also chosen um, you before the foundation of the world was created. God's grace and salvation should not be taken for granted. Um, good works are evidence of and give assurance of salvation, though they are never the basis of your salvation. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't like, I don't want it to be twisted. Salvation is faith plus literally nothing. Just having faith and believing in the gospel. And the gospel being, let me just pull up here. The gospel. The gospel is in 1 Corinthians 15. It says, Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received in which you stand and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, meaning believe with all your heart. 
It says, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared then to the 12, 12 disciples. Um, so he, he technically, he came, he died, he rose, he ascended, he chilled here for 40 days, and then he went back up to the throne of, um, by God. So either way, super incredible. He took the wrath for us because we were sinners. We were born sinners. We were doomed from the start and Jesus came, understood that, lived a perfect, perfect life and still died on the cross for sinners as there were sinners present while they were sinning, while he was dying, while he was bleeding, while he's being tortured. Jesus is so incredible and he's done so much for us and it makes me very passionate and fired up so I'm going to calm down but it saddens my heart to see people in fear right now. I walk around, I drove to school today, there's people driving in their cars with masks on in it. It honestly makes me very frustrated because number one, we're already being microwaved with this 5G stuff. And so putting on a mask while you're in the car, you're giving yourself a double whammy. You are like giving yourself carbon dioxide poisoning. And that's this is a whole nother video to be honest, but it's just, it saddens me to look around and see people in such fear and so conditioned and such sheeps of the world. We should be sheeps to Jesus. We should be putting all of this time and energy into Jesus, okay? Like, I don't know. It just It's just so frustrating because he's denied so much when it's such a simple and free thing. But yet, you know, I had a, I actually had a productive comment in my comment sections that made me really think. Um, I don't remember the username, but they basically said, you know, it, we get a, a free stimulus check. We get a free, a free stimulus check from the government. We all line up like super quick. Um, unemployment, sign up for that super quick. Um, food stamps, things of that nature. I understand there's a time and a place where you actually might need these things and that's what they're designed for. But what my point is, is, is that the human race is so conditioned to seek out free things, seek out freebies. But I've said this before, salvation is free. It's free as well. And people deny that. And I'm, under, I'm trying to understand why. And it's like their flesh has just completely, completely surpassed them and they are so blinded and hardened and so dependent on this world and building riches here when none of that goes anywhere with you. Where does it go? Nowhere. It literally just dis disintegrates here and it's like we should be putting all that time, energy and effort and love and just steadfast energy into building riches above and eternal, eternal life. So I'm gonna leave you with that. I love you guys. Um, just remember that you are sealed the moment that, um, let's see, I actually wrote it down here. It's in Ephesians 1, 13. It says, in him, you also, in him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Meaning, it's all about your heart. And the moment that you say that, you are sealed and you are saved. That doesn't mean you keep living a sinful life because, I mean, let's be honest, once the Holy Spirit's in you, it will literally make it so difficult for you to live the same way. You will feel such friction if you try to live the same way. So, I love you guys. I'm going to end it there. Stay encouraged. Stay plugged into God's word. Stay, stay in your prayer, heavy, heavy in your prayer. And we'll be out of here soon. Love you. Bye.